Right to work is just something to divide the working class. Right to work is just something to destroy worker power and shore up corporate power. got a tweet from David said <laughs> so silly David said right to work keeps oppressive unions from mandating its terms onto the entire workforce unions don't care about the workers the customer the product the company the or the stockholders the they only care about enriching themselves and increasing their own power i mean this is just like it's it's, it's silly right it's silly because so there, there are a couple things to know about right to work, that uh, and and the fact that and and the people who are pushing it, the people who are pushing it constantly rail on freeloaders, uh, specifically with regards to undocumented immigrants. They hate uh, people who that they, they ostensibly hate when people take advantage of benefits that they did not pay into. When you are in a right-to-work environment and you are represented by a union and you do not pay dues, you take advantage of the representation that a union brings you. And the representation that union bring that, that, that unions bring you is just objectively it makes your uh you, you know you, you we can see like we can look at the data you know one of the things that folks like to say is facts don't care about your feelings okay well let's look at the facts we can see that union workers make more they have higher wages, something on the order of 14 to 25 percent higher wages. We can see that they have better benefits. They have uh, they pay less for more health care. They have better retirements. Union workers are basically the only ones in this country that still have pensions. Where we don't have pensions, we have we still have better retirement plans. They are unions create safer work environments. Union workplaces have something on the order of 80 percent fewer fatalities. Union nursing homes during the pandemic had a 40% lower patient mortality rate than non-union work, uh, 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 non-union nursing homes. And, you know, th th this fellow is telling us that, that unions don't care about the customers. The patients in these nursing homes are the customers and they experience, they die 40% less, you know, in union nursing homes. And the reason for that is because uh, when, these caretakers are able to have a voice on the job. They obviously, they don't get, you know, you don't go into nursing home work to get rich, right? You care about the people that you, uh, that, you know, you care about the work. And so the, when workers like nurses, like people in nursing homes have the capability to speak for themselves, to have a voice on the job, they create safer working environments. And same with teachers. Their for teachers, their teach, their working environment is the student's learning environment. And so what are the things that teachers fight for? Much more often than not, along with raises, which they absolutely deserve and everybody can agree that teachers do not make enough in this country uh, m even harder than they fight for raises they fight for smaller classroom sizes they fight for more uh, they fight for more equipment in the classroom they fight for nurses in the class in, in in schools they fight for counselors in the schools because they care about their communities they care about their students and they uh, you know I mean it's just it's, it's just absurd on the fa on, on, on its face to believe that unions don't care about uh, the 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 communities and and the patients and the customers uh, and and you know unions uh, to say that unions don't care about the company obviously there's some amount of of tension there which is which is right and good because when uh, uh, you know executives <laughs> the the profit is literally money that we workers create that we don't get okay so what the executives make in profit is just wages that we don't get wages that they take from us but of course if you don't have a company then you don't have uh, uh you, you don't have a job unions go workers go out of their way like this this i really have so little patience for this nonsense narrative of workers and unions being greedy because we can look at the 2008 financial crisis and what did the workers give up uh, that worked for the big big 3 in the UAW that worked for uh Ford and GM and 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 Chevrolet they gave up 
up wages. They gave up benefits. They gave up health care to save the company. And on top of what the workers sacrificed, us as an American people paid for a bailout for these companies. And what did the executives sacrifice? Nothing. The executives didn't sacrifice a damn thing. They took bonuses after they received their bailouts. So I have no, I have no patience for this nonsense narrative about workers and unions being greedy when the same executives at the same time, workers and their countrymen are sacrificing to keep the companies afloat. They're taking bonuses and it's like, get a grip, get a grip. Okay. I mean, like this is, it's absurd. And so, you know, the, the, the idea that right to work is the, the idea that right to work uh, you know, is is just about unions wanting to build their power for its own sake. Of course, we want to build our power, but why do we want to build our power? Because we want better lives for our members, for ourselves, and for our communities. Right to work is just something to divide the working class. Right to work is just something to destroy worker power and shore up corporate power. It is the government, and the other thing is that, uh, you know, Folks that advocate right to work say that they hate freeloading, of course, unless it's workers freeloading off of non-members freeloading off of union representation. They also say that they hate government intervention in the free market. They hate government intervention in contracts. They hate government intervention in working conditions. There are a myriad of conditions that you agree to to have a job. You have, you know, there are all sorts of conditions of employment that, that, that workplaces require. They require you to have degrees. They require you to have a uniform. They require you to have transportation. They require you to look a certain way. They require you to talk a certain way. All sorts of things that conservative free market types have no problem with. When workers get enough power in a workplace to mandate one thing as a condition of employment that employers and employees freely agree to that one thing being you have to pay for the representation that a union provides and thus this condition of employment being a condition that increases worker power that is the only condition of employment that conservatives and republicans have a problem with ask yourself why that is why is it that literally the only condition of employment that these free market fundamentalists have a problem with is the one condition of employment in America that we have that shores up worker power okay and once you ask yourself why that is and you answer honestly the answer is that they don't actually have a principled commitment to free markets they don't actually have a pr principled commitment to uh, 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 to the freedom of private entities to agree to contracts. The reason is that they want to destroy worker power. They don't want us to get uppity. They don't want us to believe that we deserve better lives. They want us to be quiet and docile, and they want us to accept what we're given and to uh to just to just accept it and to be uh you know meek little servants that will do whatever they say without putting up a fight that's what they want you just saw a clip from the valley labor report we are live every saturday morning from 9 30 a.m till 12 30 p.m and we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.